there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and I wanted to talk to you today about things that I need to get done in the garden for January. I'm in a cool temperate garden so this will help others in a cool temperate climate. I'm in a cool zone 10 and heat zone 4 and at the moment we're having a La Nina so it's a little bit cooler than usual and it's certainly a lot wetter than usual. Um, this is usually a once in a 10 year event, although last year we had a fairly wet summer too, um, not a La Nina, um, and we had a lot of smoke haze, so that um, affected how much we could produce here on our farm. Um, we had tomatoes that weren't ripening on the vine, and a lot of other things were affected, things that like heat and sunshine, like capsicums and chilies, um, and eggplant um, had their production severely affected. I still had a fairly good harvest of pumpkins, but I did plant a lot of plants um, and everything else like zucchinis and cucumbers produced beautifully as well as the usuals. Um, this year everything's growing so beautifully because we're getting periods of rain and sunshine um, and humidity and heat and so the garden is just thriving which I'm really excited about but this will also um, cause some challenges down the track like powdery mildew, my cucumbers, possibly pumpkins and zucchinis especially because my zucchinis are really closely um, planted together with other things so the airflow is going to be um, slightly affected. Um, my cucumbers are being trained up on a trellis so um, they've got the best chance they've got but they are still fairly tightly packed so I'm not sure if um, lower down where the fence is, um, I've got a steel fence at the back of my cucumbers, um, quite possibly um, affect the airflow and um, fungal issues there. But I thought I'd run through all the jobs that I need to tick off in January and hopefully this will help you in your garden too. So first up, I want to um, catalogue all my seeds tonight. I'm going to go through um, each variety, zucchinis for example, and write down what I've got of each and what I want to grow next year. I'm hoping to condense my um, varieties as much as I love the variety. Um, I find it really fun to grow lots of different colours and shapes and sizes but um, I'm hoping to get into seed saving um, next year just to help with our self sufficiency and with the unpredictability of seed supplies that we're seeing at the moment um, from the beginning of COVID uh, in March 2009, uh, 2020. Um, so I'm hoping to grow one variety of zucchini um, Although if I grow cucumbers, I won't be able to save the seeds anyway, but certainly only two varieties of pumpkins, so I can save the seeds from those at least. So I'll go through all the seeds that I have and what I'm hoping to plant out during 2021, and then I'll purchase um, anything that I've got in my gap. So I'll be purchasing in bulk this time, um, just because I grow in bulk. So it makes it a lot more um, economic. Um, if I go to the smaller seed companies that sell in the smaller packets, um, that's fine on the home scale or for something like um, eggplant and zucchini, um, sorry, eggplant and capsicums and chilies. Um, but something like carrots, where I'm growing big rows, onions, big rows of onions, um, I want to purchase them in um, gram packs instead of seed count packs. Um, that way it works out cheaper for me. That's not going to be the case for everyone because not everyone has the scale that I've got. Um, in January, I'm going to have to harvest a few things daily like zucchinis and cucumbers and tomatoes, especially the cherry tomatoes. Um, the other things that I'll expect to be harvesting in January are my onions. Um, they're just about ready to be harvested. Um, basil, silverbeet, leeks, corn carrots, mango wurzel, um, potatoes are coming up for being harvested. I've got a heap of cabbages just about ready to be harvested. Broccoli, that could go in the daily harvest at the moment. Um, zucchini, cucumber and basil. Um, I will need to keep up with the weeding, especially with all this rain. Everything is growing amazingly, including all my weeds. So um, something like this is a wild mustard. This could um, potentially cross-pollinate with some of my other brassicas. Um, and so I need to get stuff like this out. 
um, just grasses that are self seeding at the moment. I need to keep tying up my tomatoes and cucumbers because that is becoming a daily job at the moment. I've got over 100 tomato plants and about 50 um, cucumber plants and because I'm growing the cucumbers up, um, they're not holding on like I thought they would so they need a little bit of help um, in some sections and the tomatoes are growing like crazy at the moment with this rain and heat so um, just keep readjusting them on the stakes, making sure that they're tied up. Because it's really wet and there's um, fungal issues that could possibly come from this wet humid weather, um, I might start pruning lower leaves to make a really tall um, naked bottom part of my, my tomato plant and just keep the top really bushy. I need to clean out my hothouse desperately. Um, there's lots of weeds underneath and there's a few empty pots in there not doing anything. Um, so I want to consolidate everything that is growing and then have a heap of open space for my autumn and winter plants. So all my brassicas. I'm going to start my onions in there early this year. I want to start some leeks in there early. Um, and then things like um, beetroot because I don't have any space in my garden to direct sow. So I might start my beetroot um, in there and then I can transplant them to my garden when I pull out the onions. I want to make another hot compost pile. I made four cubic meters of a hot compost um, in winter to early spring and I used all that in my gardens and the gardens have been thriving because of it. Um, but I want to make another um, cubic meter or two just to top up some beds that might need it for winter. So beds that I'm going to be growing garlic in that are really hungry and love all that organic matter um, are beds that I could possibly top up after I've grown through summer and it's pretty good practice to keep topping up your bed with compost and organic matter because you want to keep it rich and fertile um, you will see a drop off in growth um, if you don't do that if you don't fertilize um, and I choose compost as my fertilizer um, and I'm speaking from experience when I first started growing in my second suburban house I had amazing results the first year and then the second year I didn't um, keep adding the organic matter in and I saw a significant decrease in yield um, and plant health. So one of the goals here is to continually make hot compost in um, winter, early spring and then summer to early autumn to fertilise in those two main growing periods. I'm continually sowing, continually planting but um, they're my main times in the garden where I basically pull everything out and start again so um, having that hot compost there just helps enrich the soil a little bit more and then of course mulching on top to protect that and add more organic matter again. I may spread some pot ash around my tomatoes to help with fruit sets they need the potassium to make the flowers to um, create the fruit so I'm just going to use um, ash from my wood fires um, from winter and just spread that thinly around the plants and let the rain water it in. Um, I'll also need to think about fertilizing. Um, I don't often do this, but I'm making a point of doing it this year and um, just using home brews. So things like comfrey tea, wormweed, um, banana fertilizer, that's also really high in potassium, um, and my liquid mi microbes. So I brewed some microbes using rice. Um, and then milk and then molasses so um, I want to get that on into the garden and see or half the garden and see if it makes a difference um, because I've seen a huge difference just by using hot compost this year um, usually I use compost but it's cold compost the hot compost has heaps of um, microbial life in it and my compost was full of worms I couldn't believe how many worms um, invaded it um, and really quickly too so hot compost can be finished within six to eight weeks which is why um, I'm thinking of making it now for use in mid-autumn. So lastly, I was going to tell you um, the seeds that you should be planting now. So um, I'm going to sow another succession of beans, um, beetroot, Brussels sprouts, large cabbages, so not the small ones, um, things like savoy and the really big um, golden acre drumhead kind of type cabbages. Um, I want to put in another round of carrots, um, cauliflowers because they take a really long time to produce um, 
kohlrabi that can go straight in the ground once my onions get pulled up um, leeks lettuce pak choy parsnip radish silver beet swede katsoi turnips and warrigal grain so they're all the seeds that i can plant in my climate in january i really hope you found this helpful in figuring out what garden jobs you need to get done this month Happy gardening, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.